Good day, lords and ladies of the internet. I am your host today, the Parafox Archangel, the English gentleman of the internet, and I welcome you all back to Danganronpa, cutting, cutting the, the branches. branches. Jinx. Now we get to do this without uh, without you, Rookie. Well, too bad. I don't follow jinxes. <laughs> So, last time we did this, we were doing Chapter 3. But the support conversations between the chapters have been updated. And thus, it's perfect for us to do there now. So, the area did get a bit of an update because I didn't like how the first area looked. So, Ooh. now we are here. Here's a Maggie. Oh, it does look nice now. Rather than so, just remember the... Hmm? so, you remember how... Uh, one of the backgrounds from Trial 5 of Trigger Hattie Havoc looked, the first one. Yeah. This is that. I just took that from that level and copy-pasted it over to this one. And I did this because I thought it looked nicer. Fair enough, then. That works. Woohoo! Maggie, you look so glitchy doing that. Maggie looks glitchy in general. <laughs> oh, well. Well, I got one. I can't be bothered for the other. So, which I think we did chapter two before, didn't we? Uh, no, we didn't. Didn't we? Nope. And you can tell because of this sentence. Also, as a note, the development order chapter order is based on what I have the energy to do, not chapter order. If I think I need a break, I work on these, e these uh, easier conversations. Between development of Chapter 3, Deadly Life, and ch the Chapter 2 support, uh... Cindy Coded Cat opted, opted out of the project, as it was no longer appealing to do so. This can happen if you find it fun at first, but aren't super into it, so I understand. But this means that I have to let everyone know that Jill is voiced by Lunary Hughes, and Nanako is voiced by I Have No Hot Coco now. Fair enough. There's 28 in total. Choose your support. So let us start with Samantha Gramble, Class B. Samantha's friend group is not the greatest, and any parental figure would want her, her away from bad influences. I will say this. I said this before a million times. I'll say it again. The cast of Until Dawn sucks. <laughs> yes. All the other characters are annoying. <sighs> Sam, I want to ask you something. Want another lesson on animal behavior? We haven't gotten to rabbits yet, and I'm sure you'd love those. Oh, he definitely would. Actually, I was thinking about that really bad prank you told me about. Oh, what about it? So, your friends decided to pull the prank to get your BFF Hannah to stop making googly eyes at some stud mic, right? Yeah. And five of your friends contributed to it? Yeah. And not only did Hannah go missing and probably die, but her sister did too? Yes. Why are you friends with these people? <laughs> you gotta admit, killing people with a prank is definitely not a good image. And staying friends with them would probably just make any time you're around them incredibly uncomfortable. To be fair, I'm not sure what the legal ramifications of it would be. Like, given how it happened in Until Dawn, would they actually be classified as responsible? Because, theoretically, they did it to themselves, even though what caused them to do it to themselves was the prank. So you really can't- so, while you definitely can't get them on murder, I'm not even sure you could properly get them on manslaughter. You could probably get them on sexual harassment, though, because the, the prank in nature was sexual harassment. They were filming, trying to film a girl while she was undressing herself. Okay, fair. That's fair. They're really not that bad, Gramble. Yes, they, they are. Shut up. Two people with a prank! <laughs> <laughs> I love how you respond before Gramble then. Yes, they are. Come on, it was a stupid prank. They were young and stupid. Okay, some of them are still pretty stupid, but still, they couldn't have known it would go like that. Sam, 
Why did they do this and embarrass your friend so bad she ran off in the freezing cold? Uh, so, here's the context for why the prank happened. Okay. Hannah had a huge crush on Mike and kept okay. flirting with him, trying to impress him. Okay. They got tired of it, which is why the prank happened. Okay, so she was basically trying to seduce another man who's already in a relationship, which technically does also put her at fault. Actually, the support brings this up. <laughs> Sam, I feel like there's something here I'm missing. This prank already sounds like something your friend should have gotten grump and arrested over. Seriously? Filming a young girl in a moment of intimacy like that? The grump were they thinking? Which is exactly why I wanted to stop it. But why go to such an extreme when we're flirting? It's not like Mike was taken or anything. Uh-oh. Um, out of curiosity, what if he was? <laughs> well, that'd explain the extreme measures better. But then that'd make everyone look bad, including Hannah. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and then suddenly the eye change. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> yes, Mike was taken. Did Hannah know? Yes. I mean, how would they not have known? <laughs> Like, I, I can see someone trying to make the argument that Hannah did not know, but Mike's girlfriend at the time was Emily. There is no way everyone did not know. Not given Emily, Emily's personality, no. Emily would have made a huge deal about it and let everyone know that she is girlfriend with the class president. Thank God. It's not her fault she had feelings for a guy that was taken. You're mad at me. I'm mad at your terrible <laughs> friends. Again, why are you friends with these horrible people? <laughs> Samantha and Gramble have achieved B support. Like, let's give Cromdo and Befica some credit. They're not this bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Samantha, Nikos, let's see what this is now. Samantha is definitely glad to get away from the lodge. How are you feeling now that we're in a less scary place? Better, thanks. Yay! I think I like this place, even though it's a bit big. That is such a happy looking face on Nikos. <laughs> so, the, so the entire reason that I had the camera angle change from the other one that showed Gramble from the top side to this one was because we wouldn't have been able to see Nico's face because of the hat. The very happy expression, I love it. I like it too, and the space has its advantages. There's so many great jogging routes here. I like the library. It's really quiet and there's so much to learn in it. And the training grounds is a nice atmosphere. I've never seen a jungle indoors before. It'd almost be like walking through a zoo if there were any animals in it. Rex is a big red dinosaur. Does that count? I don't think so. So you guys saw Rex, right? What was he like? He was big and red and he lifted heavy things. And he was... How do I say it? Terrifying? Not until we all saw nature calling anyway. You grew up surrounded by wheat fields, right? You know what fertilizer is made of. Is it poop? <laughs> How do you not know that? Yes. <laughs> Nico probably would know that, but it ruins the joke. Anyways, I was going to say that Rex was not scary. He was talking about training and music and stuff. That just makes everything more confusing. If Octavian's not threatening or in charge, and Rex isn't threatening and is in charge, then why are we all in this game anyway? I, l I love how no one else gets it, but Bleep Bleep worked it out completely. And then I bet Bleep Boop Boop thinking along the lines of, given the fact of what Rex and 
Octavian's personalities are, considering he knows I said nothing, then it feels like there's someone above Rex. I don't think we've had that support yet, but I don't think the audience saw that one yet. Oh, then bleep, bleep, boop, boop, I said nothing. What just to add, just edit this, just edit it so that it happens later. <laughs> if we were all taken away to this game where we're supposed to, you know. Yeah. Then why is it that everybody in charge is acting so casually about it? The motive, for example. Last motive wasn't bad for what the game is about, but without a photo or video showing someone we care about in a bad situation, it's much less effective. Hmm. Please don't give the bad guys ideas. No, you and I saw where this game originated from. They must have already thought about it. So, you think they're holding back? I don't know, but something's not adding up. Huh. Let's go figure stuff out so it can add up. Some I remember and Nico have achieved C support. I remember in one of the other support conversations, I don't remember which one it was, but in one of the other support conversations, it actually is brought up that the motives that we've seen so far are basically just very similar to the ones from Actual Angaroba, but neutered to heck. Like, they are not as good as actual Danganronpa motives. Makes sense. Now we move on to Samantha and Sam. And thus, the Sams talk to each other. Hey. Hey, Sam. If you're about to destroy something, I can just leave so I'm out of the blasting zone. <laughs> You've just met him and this is already the impression you have of him. I mean... <laughs> Let's be honest, it's accurate. It is accurate, yes. <laughs> nah, I'm planning on that tomorrow. Oh. Wait, did you need me for something? Are you a vet? I haven't had a checkup in a while, and I'm wondering if you've got anything to calm my nerves. Oh, Oh, that's cute. Uh, I'm 19. Yeah, so? I recruited a tech genius that made a heart transplant for the president that's way younger than that. Yeah, the geek, that's something she did. I love how everything from Sam's world is just so, it's got, it like, is so dis it's, what's the word? Over the top ridiculous and insane. It's just so out of place in the normal world. Okay, I need to ask this. Are you in Crash cartoon characters that got dragged out of TV land for this? Everything about both of you is just ridiculous and over the top. No, I'm more into comic books. Editor's note. Sam and Max started as a comic book series that slowly branched out to TV and video games later. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. didn't know that. That's not what I meant. Come on, you get what I mean. We're just as real as you are, lady. Now, are you a vet or not? I'm a conservationist. Sorry. Dang it. That's what she's going for, anyway. Considering all your violent behaviors, I'd expect you'd gotten it out of your system. The other officers keep getting on my case all the time. Regulations and morals and collateral damage being bad. Uh, it's so irritating. Collateral damage being bad. Uh, what do they know? I mean, you know that Sam and Max will shoot at someone's taillights just for a quick thousand dollars. <laughs> what if they care about collateral? Oh, God. What do you usually do to calm down? Nothing. Max does that for me. What's Max like? He's a violent, impatient, lazy lagomorph. You know what? Lagomorph is the correct word. How the heck does he calm you down, then? You weren't friends with him since childhood. You probably wouldn't get it. Editor's note 2. Sam and Max's relationship and how they both operate is surprisingly complicated. But in general, if Sam loses his temper, Max has to step in to calm him down before he shows that between the two of them, he's actually more violent than Max's. Max uh, is the one that gets engaged in violence more often, but Sam gets more extreme with it. It's like the difference between I'm going to punch you in the face and I'm going to get this axe and hack your head off. Basically. <laughs> you 
aren't handling this well at all inside, are you? I guess I just admitted it, huh? Well, crap. <laughs> if I just knew he was okay... If Rex did anything to him, he'd have used it as last week's motive. I thought that too. We weren't shown any evidence proving anything happened, but... <laughs> this anxiety. He flat out said why we weren't shown it. What do you mean? Octavian said before that our minds will have to fill in the blanks. Now my brain won't stop. You know what? That's actually very good psychological torture. Whatever horrible face yeah. your mind is coming I'm ruining up with everything for everybody. You know deep down that it's just the mastermind screwing with you. And yet, I still don't feel any better. Are you sure you don't know any tricks to calm my nerves? I might know a few things, but I don't know if it'll actually work. Sam at one and Sam two have achieved C support. All right, what have we got now? Sam, Samantha and Natsuki, B support. Let's see if Sam's kindness and patience outlasts N Natsuki's. <laughs> I mean, she puts up with the cast of Until Dawn. It's probably she's probably a very patient young woman. True, very true. Hey Sam, what's up, Nat? I noticed you gave me a nickname recently. I'm used to me and my friends giving nicknames like M and Jess instead of Emily and Jessica. If you don't like it, I can stop. Nah, I like how fine. the one thing we I constantly do is just bitch enough. about Until Dawn's characters being that terrible. That like a close-knit friends kind of thing. I mean, people tend to go for the low-hanging fruit, so... I guess that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, it's not like we hate each other, but we really don't have any common interests. I guess your friends and you must have had a lot in common. Actually, we didn't have that much in common. We all liked writing, but our tastes in literature couldn't have been further apart. Yeah. I don't think you need to have the same interests as someone to be friends with them. I suppose you're right. Though, it would be nice if we had more things we were passionate about that we could relate to each other with. I guess you'd probably have an easier time connecting with Ash than me. Ash is a friend of mine that likes writing and reading. You'd probably like her. You just know a bomb's about to go off. Uh... How is Ashley worse than Emily? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is she? You know that prank that killed Hannah Montana, I mean Hannah Washington and her sister Beth? Uh, it turns out, uh, Ashley's honesty stat goes down if she says she feels bad about it. She doesn't feel bad about being involved in a prank that killed her friends? Oh yeah. She also can tell Chris to shoot her to save him if you haven't played the gun at himself first instead of her. Then leave him her dead because he did what she told him to do. Hmm. This game's not very well written or programmed, is it? <laughs> Why do you like it again? It's very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it, it's complicated. I like the concept. I just wish they executed it better. I love how you just immediately answer that out of out of scene. Like <sighs> Sam would not be Sam from Until Dawn would not be here if I hated Until Dawn. So I have to like it on some level. Uh. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to not die first. <sighs> you don't seem interested. You can be a bit confusing sometimes, Nat. It's a curse, and I'm aware of it. Anyways, more TV and chill? Sure. Samantha and Natsuki have achieved B support. Samantha and Crash, C support. This will be interesting. Ah, oh, nature. There's just something so majestic about just soaking in the atmosphere of a new biome. It's always so mysterious, wondering what could be around the corner. 
apparently that thing. And moment ruined. <laughs> Later. I don't want to be the fun police, but I'd like to enjoy a nature walk and your explosive tendencies are killing the atmosphere. Oh, buddy. I get it, Peter, get it. I've got it, Betty. Oh, sorry. I'll just take a nap then. I'm tired anyways. Just let the audience read it if they don't want to read it, they're lazy. <laughs> He writes it down on paper instead. You understand me just fine, but you can't communicate back? I don't think I get how that works. No. I have so many questions I want to ask about Australia since I've never been there, and how you're a sentient animal on par with humans, but... Okay, truth time. I snuck a peek at that paper from last week. All right. The one of Sam's vision? The one where he saw you talking normally to the cops? Huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> something that... Okay, so I think I went and over-exaggerated this trait of Samantha's, but one of the only interesting things she ever does is right at the beginning of the game, so let's just mention it and get it out of the way. Okay. At the beginning of Until Dawn... Sam has the option of snooping through Chris's phone right at the beginning of the game, or leaving it be. I think I exaggerated her curiosity trait and how she snoops on people. Uh. But it's also one of the only not fully moral things she does to make her flawed and interesting. Fair. Fair. So I think I might have over-exaggerated that because her snooping on other people's stuff happens a lot in this mod. I have a bad habit of getting involved in other people's business. I'm sorry. You're curious. I get it. To answer, I'm mutated. Makes sense. Wait, you're not radioactive, are you? Not that I'm aware of. I've been near toxic waste, but I'm still kicking just fine. <laughs> That's not a good thing, Crash. You could be contaminated or slowly dying. You should get that checked out fast. I think I'm fine. The island I live on has lots of mutated and cybernetically enhanced animals, and uh, none of us have had a hair fall out yet. I get the feeling asking you about the wildlife isn't going to be the normal animals unaffected by that stuff. Come on, you're acting like the entire island is coated in toxic sludge. But yeah, the turtles and crabs don't stick out compared to me, my brother, and my sister. Hmm. Oh, I didn't even know you had siblings. But, yeah, I'd rather learn more about dingoes and crocodiles than a mutant dingo crocodile with a flamethrower. The fact she got that perfect. Was that a lucky guess, or uh, were you spying on me? <laughs> I thought I was exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm good at comedy. <laughs> Uh, it's just like little things like Why that. Which I want to know this stuff anyway. I'm hoping to learn more for when I become a conservationist, so I can protect the wildlife. And from the sounds of it, wherever in Australia you live seriously needs one. Hey, we like being sentient. So what if I'm a mutant? I like the way I am. Very fair. I wasn't trying to imply that. I just don't want the toxic waste killing everything, or that scientist torturing anything. Leave the scientists to me and my siblings. We always send them back. That's for the waste. Yeah, we should probably look into that just to be safe. <laughs> Thanks, Crash. Anything else? Yeah, we should probably want to get out of the way. <sighs> <sighs> Let's just rip the band-aid off. So you sometimes leave your gamepad unattended, wide open, and uh. Why did you do that? You gotta be suspicious of everyone, and you already hid stuff from us. Well, fair, I guess, but I don't have anything to hide. Well, hide the band of boy harder. I didn't need to know about that. <laughs> the look on his face there. We will never speak of this again. <laughs> Samantha and Crash have achieved sea support. Samantha and Nanako. Heads up, expect this to get sidetracked fast. So, this is where you saw Rex? Yep. 
He was right over there lifting a car. I've never seen a... tracks like this before. You said he looked like a big red dinosaur? Sorry, so, so Nanako had to have a voice actor swap because of what happened. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to discredit Coco, but Charlie did... Uh, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to. Charlie did so good as Nanako. They were the perfect Nanako. It's just the Coco way it is sometimes good... when you can't get enough female voice actors. I mean, you only have two. There's Raven, Coco. I'm pretty sure no idea is a girl. They just play a lot of male characters. Charlie, who quit, and Lunar. So that's five. Oh, which okay. is around probably half-ish. So it's just you don't have a lot of people doing the extra voices. Yeah, usually Raven gets stuck with all the extra voices. Yeah. Because uh, no one wants to do them when I offer. I think I need to ask directly instead of throwing a general request out to the void and hoping someone responds. Fair. Fair. I mean, that's what you did for me and Bayamute, so... But yeah, Coco does a good job, but Charlie was perfect for this role. Hey, you can't help these things. Yeah. Yeah, there he is right over there. S there he is over there. Slowly turns. Isn't it way past your bedtime? Um, Nanako, we shouldn't be here right now. Lady, chill. If you wanted your dad, you'd be dead a week ago when you got stuck here. What's this place used to train? Mercenaries. It's usually filled with plant monsters and T-Rex lords, but we don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Fair. Editor's note. Raising one dinosaur's enough, thanks. <laughs> I love how his eyes change the moment that editor's note comes up. <laughs> really feeling the love right now. <sighs> Why are we here then? Can't say. Why make a school for mercenaries, though? To prevent an evil sorceress uprising. Actually, we could just go to the classroom training section we have here. You could probably get your an questions answered more effectively there. Hmm. Yay. Nanako, this is not normal. And thus the building was initially used as a shelter many long years ago before the renovations of the building it is today. Here, have the lore of the game. Why was it a shelter? I don't know, but it likely has to do with the source of where they killed off a lot of people. One sec. <laughs> Alright, Google, give me an answer. Google, I love it. History's weird. Why would the sorceress want to go to war, though? Am I seriously standing in a jungle classroom with a T-Rex learning about how a sci-fi mercenary high school was originally a shelter because magical war is right now? Get used to the weird, it ain't letting up anytime soon. <laughs> huh. Not a lot of details here about the shelter. Hmm. That's annoying. But why go to war, though? Was it ideals, money, or self-preservation? Uh... Adele being a tyrant caused it. Adele, of course. Ha, Adele. No, okay. Hmm. Adele from okay, uh, Final Fantasy VIII. So what are the most common reasons for war and other bad things happening? Because we have to keep in mind that this area is from Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Why do bad people do bad things? Usually power and greed. Yep. And less evil people. But good people have no reason to do bad things. No, they do. Thieves steal food to survive or feed loved ones. It's not just for self gain. Try not to look at the world in black and white. It'll only make life harder. Can I have more examples? Some good people wind up going to war and dying for things like their country, beliefs for their deity, or money to help their family. This results in shooting at other good people with the same sets of reasons on the opposing side. Why can't we all get along? That'd be nice if it ever happened, but I'm not hopeful. We can't get along because the people in charge of those people doing it for good reasons are the ones there for power and greed. And that the tends ones... to be the case. What are your goals here? These guys are so confusing. 
The Samantha and Nanako sea support is not normal, but that's what happens when the villains suck at their job. <laughs> not even subtle about it. Samantha Octavian, let's go. And so Samantha seeks answers for the designated exposition character. Fun. Okay, Octavian, question. You said the end of a phase would have something drastic happen. Dare I ask what would have happened last phase? That's a good question. It's exactly what you expect. A uh, window pro attack and the launch. Basically the finale of Until Dawn. Yep. Once was bad enough, okay? Yeah, but tension. And also the simulations are non faithful So it'll probably still hurt a lot. <sighs> Okay, I'm not trying to take this out on you, you're just the lackey, but the Mastermind has no right to do that. It's pretty tactless to you, yeah. Thing is, the Mastermind is well aware that tension is pretty much necessary for the game to be interesting. There's no stakes or no goals, the game falls flat. That's just basic level game design. Uh... It probably won't make you feel any better, but we pretty much knew that phase wasn't gonna end like that anyway because of mayonnaise. <laughs> I still love the fact you call her mayonnaise. Mayu. Her name is mayonnaise now. Fine, whatever. <laughs> I love how Sam still tries to be the good guy and just try to say her name is Mayu. No, it's not. Hey, isn't that unfair though? I actually thought that recently myself. Some locations being connected to the participants could have consequences outside of potential kill options. The location familiarity could help those that are familiar with the layout or hurt by bringing up bad memories. The latter is what I'm more worried about. Ooh, ooh boy. <sighs> what is it? I'm not sure I should say. <laughs> You're going to talk about what the chapter 3 is. Of course. Chapter 3. <laughs> it's entirely chapter 3 what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, I'll give credit where it's due. Compared to the one with Junko we saw earlier in the classroom, this could be a lot worse. Oh yeah, Junko has the integrity of wet tissue paper. If breaking our own rules multiple times and dipping it off, I don't know what will. I meant mood-wise. There's a lot of nice people and not a lot of incentive to kill. Not that we're in a good mood right now. Hmm. Yeah. Samantha and Octavian have achieved sea support. If I'm honest, I really love the conversations with uh, Octavian just because it shows the game more. Like, what's happening in the background of the game a lot more, you know? Grandmello and Nico, this is gonna get depressing. You sleepwalk an awful lot, don't you? <sighs> yep. What causes sleepwalking? Is it something you're eating? No, the doctor I went to said it's not that, but she couldn't help me. Did she know what it was, though? Eh, she said it's likely caused by my dreams, and she didn't specialize in that sort of thing. You do sound like you're constantly having nightmares. Nico. Why are you having nightmares? Maybe if they stop, so will the sleepwalking. Sleepwalking is super dangerous, especially right now with the killing game happening. If anyone finds out you sleepwalk, they'll... You'll be... I know, I know. What are your nightmares about? Please tell us. Ah. Uh, uh... Need to talk about it. I don't care if you don't tell me, but tell someone. This can't keep up. Oh, Nico. I'm scared, Nico. Uh, uh Who is this sprout you mumbled about in your sleep? I need to stop torturing this man. <laughs> I love how that's your instant reaction. Gramp! What? I can't. I can't. Not right now. Not long after. Are you okay, Gramble? I need a favor. Take Nico upstairs a while. 
I need 40 minutes where nobody is near me. Yeah, got it. Come I don't on. know how yeah, noticeable it is. Stairs. I don't know how noticeable it is, but Granville's eyes are bloodshot right now. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. But... Upstairs, kiddo. <laughs> Stop torturing the Muppet. I need people to give a crap about Gramble to look up his game. Gramble and I mean, it worked on you. Gramble and Nico have achieved a very depressing sea support. Like, remember when we went through Chapter 2 and Gramble just started crying in the cafeteria? It's like... And I go, does this make you curious about what happens in Bug Snacks? Yes, exceptionally. Then play Bug Snacks for the love of God. <laughs> That's the reason I keep torturing him, to make people want to look up what the hell happens. Oh, so good. people will play Bucksnacks. Good lord. Gramble and Sam, see support. Let, let's see how polar os opposites fare in a casual conversation. Uh, hey, Mr. Sam. So, you enjoy the show? For the first five seconds before nobody was paying any attention to it anymore? Yeah, your performance was good. Though I uh, still don't understand why your banjo sounded like that. That was definitely weird. I was told, VR, roll with it. I don't know about you, but that definitely threw me off. Hmm. Does it sound normal now? Let's find out. Huh! This world is confounding. It's not being very consistent, that's for sure. So, uh, you a musician back home, or is it just a hobby? Just a hobby. Banjo doesn't take crime down, most of the time. But what's the reason you want to talk? Huh? Well, this is basically our first one-on-one -on -one conversation, ever. What caught your attention? The banjo? I mean, uh... <laughs> I guess there is truth to that. What did you want to bring up? Well, you see, I have, a. Uh... uh, she's, uh... Lucky lady back home trying to get in the music business. Ah! Oh, Wiggle's already in the music business. Sucks to be her. I wouldn't want a job in the creative industry. <laughs> Why? Well, if you look at trends with people in that industry, you see a lot of really undesirable patterns. Drug use, exhaustion, and way more luck than your average casino visit required for a turnout. It seems fun at first, but then you're stuck in a dead-end job with no chance of getting into a better position with it making catchy songs where the lyrics don't matter, and nothing you make is of good quality anymore as you pump out song after song for the publishers that only want your money. That's very insightful. It's very cynical, but it's also very insightful. Yeah. At least, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I hope to grump you're wrong. It would be a refreshing thing to be wrong about, but I don't think I am. When it comes to business, the only thing the execs care about is their bottom line, their money. Best to know this sooner instead of later. Ah, there's no way that... I mean... If you want to make your art marketable, you'd have to make it so that even if there's a message or something you want to send, you have to code it in whatever's on trend or something that's universally liked, such as action or humor. An action movie trying to convey a message about the spread of information and misinformation controlled by the government isn't exactly an easy sell compared to the part where the action hero blows up a Harrier with a missile launcher, then kills all the ninjas. Again! It's cynical, but very insightful. Editor's note. The, is Metal Gear Solid 2 really that confusing? <laughs> that was the plot of Metal Gear Solid 2 that I just had him describe. <laughs> no one knows what the hell the plot is about. Oh. The entire plot of Metal Gear Solid 2 is about the spread of information and misinformation. That is the entire plot, but no one understands that compared to Raiden blowing up a Harrier with a rocket launcher, or the part where he kills all the ninjas with naked kung fu. That's Fair. not in that stuff's not interesting by comparison to the naked cartwheel flips. Good God. But then nobody would focus on the message. Do you want people to buy it or not? Well, that's uh, uh... 
I hate how much sense that makes. Yep. Grumble and Sam have achieved sea support. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid 2. So many people completely missed out on what the message actually was supposed to be about because they were so pissed off that they were stuck playing as Raiden. Grumble that stinky. Grumble that Suki, sea support. Incoming whining. Oh, I need to complain. Can I vent? It's about your friends again? Oh, yes! Don't get me wrong, they're still my friends, but they can be such putzes sometimes. Natsuki, you really shouldn't keep bad mouthing your friends. They keep breaking everything! Well, if you hate them so much, why are you even friends? It's complicated. But I like them, not their habits. Granted, they hate my constant whining, so I guess I'm at fault too. But I'll stop complaining when they stop acting like crazy people and edge lords. Don't you have anything nice to say about them? I haven't heard a single good thing about your friends yet. Just edgy wannabe this and exhaustively energetic that. Dang, I knew I needed to work on this, but I didn't notice how bad it was. Did I really not bring up anything good about them? If you did, it was drowned out by the angry whining. I could have sworn I brought up Sayori's positivity and friendliness at some point. Oh. You just kept saying she's nuts in 70 different ways. Well, Sayori is a nut job, but she's still my nut job. I just wish our lives weren't as hectic as they are now so we could go back to just doing stupid fun things. Aww. Let's make a birthday cake. Sayori, it's none of our birthdays right now. Yeah, but the cake won't know that. <laughs> I love that. I love that mentality. <laughs> so, fun fact, Raven's the one who recommended this gag. So I put it in. Let's make two. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. You made it seem like you had no reason to be friends with them. Like you just didn't even remotely get along with each other. That's not really it. It's just complicated because of recent life changes. Sayori's great at keeping attitude high, making things fun, diffusing arguments, and getting everyone involved in activities. But she's also incredibly clumsy and tries so hard to make everyone else happy that she's been doing things she doesn't want to do because she thinks other people like it when she does it. Yuri's smart, passionate, and marches to the beat of her own weird drum, but she also gets stubborn and kept her real feelings to herself for so long that whenever it bleeds out, it's less bleeding and more violently exploding. Oh. <laughs> I worry about you sometimes, Yuri. <laughs> oh, this glorious Phineas and Ferb gag. <laughs> I worry about you sometimes, Candace. <laughs> and Monica's... Monica. Monica's Monica. Well, you get the point. See what I mean? That's if he does not like Monica. <laughs> they still get on my nerves. Do you get on theirs without me and you get? Yeah, I do. They don't say it, but it's pretty obvious. So the thing about Natsuki is that she knows she's bitchy, but she doesn't like the fact that she's bitchy. Yeah. It's like what it's like knowing your own trait, not liking your own trait, but no but also feeling that there isn't exactly much you can do about your own trait. Something like that, yeah. Okay, enough about me. What about you? You haven't complained about anything yet. I ain't got nothing to complain about. Especially after... After that. After what? I don't want to talk about it. <sighs> Alright, fine. Maybe some other time then. I'm really looking forward to Gramble's support conversations in chapter, in chap in the Nake in chapter three. That's going to be yeah. interesting because a lot is going to yeah. be revealed about him. Yay, PTSD.
But now for another fun one. Gramble and Octavian. I always love the Octavian ones. So am I really your favorite character out of everyone here? You're one of my favorites for the support conversation. It's just due to the fact the fourth wall doesn't matter, so you can get really meta with it. But at the same time, you're trying not to get meta with it, and it just leads to this very fun dynamic. Eh. Well, let's see how fun it is with this one, because this one is depressing. Gramble and Octavian, this is gonna get depressing. Gramble, if I may. May what? Ask something. You? Ask me? You already know way too much about me, and it's creepy. Aww. How did you grow to be desperate for a concept of family instead of becoming bitter to it? Oh, this is definitely gonna get depressing. Yep. What do you mean? If your family was neglecting you, wasn't there for you, or made your life suck, wouldn't you grow to hate them and view family in general in a negative light by association? Uh, not necessarily. Sheesh, just because I want someone to love doesn't mean I'd just give it to those that don't deserve it. Ah, uh, your concept of family is actually more found family than family by choice, not by blood. Honestly, I'm glad you learned from Snack that that time and energy should be spent on those that really care about you. Hmm. Hmm. Fair. That was the only good thing to come from that. I know. You don't have those stitch on ghouly eyes for your hat anymore. Those strappies didn't deserve your affection. Did you notice that? Well, that you're that he doesn't have googly eyes on his hat in this. Yeah. No, he, he I, has that. I hadn't noticed that. No. Yeah. Even since the beginning, he didn't have the strappy googly eyes attached to his hat. They were always on his hat in base game, but in this mod, I removed them in Blender before. Uh, beforehand you put in so many small details that just come up that come up later and then you just realize oh yeah and it's amazing <laughs> what brings this up family trouble oh my god yes I'm constantly miserable and uncomfortable whenever they're around and they're always around. They always judge the f out of me for anything. Like they look for reasons to piss and moan. Okay, okay, slow down, one at a time. Ain't there any family members at all you get along with? Yes, but that ended worse than it had any reason to. So hmm. they got on your nerves too? Oh no, Nana was great. She treated me like a person for a start. She spoiled me a bit, but grandparents do that sometimes. She always made food I liked, so I pretty much always ate the same thing every day. We played games frequently, like Clue, Checkers, Monopoly, Kings in the Corner, Pretty Easy, and pretty much any board game that wasn't chess. She also watched me play and draw just to spend time with me. I'm old enough to know she really wasn't into it at all, but I also know she did to be with me. So, my Nana was into playing the board games, but she wasn't into video games like I was. Yeah, that's fair. It is and, we did have, and we did have all of these games, like Clue, Checkers, Monopoly, Kings in the Corner, Parcheesi, Seen It, uh, etc. We had a lot of them. I've never heard of Kings in the Corner. I've never heard of Parcheesi. I don't think I know what Seen It is. Oh my, you haven't heard of Seen It? Seen It's a DVD board game where... Uh, I'm gonna have to link that to you then, because scenes are actually quite fun. Basically, you, it's a DVD with some sort of media on it, and it will ask you like questions and stuff, and you have to answer them, All right. or you have to play, or you have to play through mini games in order to succeed to get another turn. That's how. That's kind of how it works. That sounds like one of those. That sounds like one of those dungeon keeper like games. I'd have. I think I should. I'll throw a link at you. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, so sweet. So what went horribly wrong? <laughs> uh, she fell over in the bathroom and got hospitalized because a stroke happened. Her kids in the house decided the best option was to throw everything in the house into a dumpster or sell it and keep the stuff and material worth and sell the house while she was still in the hospital recovering. I should add. Then they threw her into what was basically a home of physical therapy people until she died of sadness and agony. She asked so many times to see her house one more time, and the family refused because it was bare and looked nothing like her house. 
It could break her heart, they said. But her heart was already broken for being shoved at home against her choice in the first place. Wow. So yeah, that, so yeah, that happened. I love and the worst part. I love I, I, the vent is so long that it just goes straight past the text box. The worst part is all this stuff is actually true. I've never I've never disputed otherwise. Oh, um, I'm sorry. That's a that's a lot. Can I have some time to process that a bit? Take as much time as you need. It's by far the worst thing my family ever did, and it's a doozy. A doozy is a grumbling understatement. Grumble so, and yeah. Octavian have achieved C support. So yeah, that is the worst thing that has ever happened in my family. Oh yeah, that's not dispute. That is easily a te I don't dispute that. That is an awful thing. It should just never happen, that sort of thing. But it sounds like something you'd expect from a soap opera. That doesn't sound real. That's the funny thing. That sounds like a Reddit story. But half the time with Reddit stories, it's just like the like, some of the semi worst ones you think that's not true. And then you look at the properly worst ones and you think that's got to be true because of the fact it's so bad. No one would actually think it up unless <laughs> it actually happened, you know? Carl and Garrus, B support. The laws in Beholder are pretty ridiculous. That's a lot of computers. Carl, I've given your situation some thought, and I just can't wrap my head around it. What do you mean? Those laws just... Who would arrest someone over jeans? Officer Simpson of the police. Editor's note. Marge arrested Herman over counterfeit designer jeans back in season six. So yes, that did happen at one point. Do they just get Good made out of nowhere and suddenly reading is illegal? I actually forgot Officer Marge episode. That was the climax. I forgot that that was the climax. If I remembered earlier, I would have had this happen during their C support when they brought it up the first time. <laughs> uh... I have no idea how that librarian still has a job. I thought I was exaggerating. What do you mean that's a law? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was enacted in September 12, 1984. I don't claim to understand those in power. I just call the police to enforce their laws. If I feel like it. Oh, thank the spirits. I thought you enforced all of them. I'd have to arrest my whole family if I did that. That is absolutely not an option. And those laws are stupid. How does this make any sense? The entire point of books is to read them. Do you have a list of them on hand so I can look over them to try and figure this idiocy out? I think I have it on me somewhere. Uh, here. Legal to possess weapons. Illegal to damage government property. Fair. Illegal to use our own foreign medicine. Okay. Why? Whatever. Illegal to make drugs, to face campaign posters, okay. storing rubber... D rubber ducks is illegal. What the f Illegal to store apples, fish, or music and sodas, wear blue ties, store light bulbs, go to the bar, or cry? It's illegal to cry? All entertainment banned? I am very quickly realizing exactly how bad my life is. <laughs> this murder game is less miserable than whatever the hell I just read. This is a dictatorship. I am quickly realizing that. There's more freedom and fun than home. Now that I know how good it is, I don't think I can ever go back. But Anna and the kids are still there. I must go back. Better idea. Once this mess is over, I'll see if there's something I can do to help you. I doubt the Normandy crew would be against helping stop this nonsense. I hope you know what you're getting into, comrade. Wouldn't be my first suicide mission. I suppose I can't stop you, but I worry my family will get caught in the crossfire. So that, that actually can happen in the game. It, if you play the, your cards wrong, Anna can get shot. Oh. Oh, okay. Doesn't Beholder have like 40 different endings? 
it has a lot of different endings and it's mostly based on how who of your family survives and whether or not you leave the country huh. makes sense there's other there's two other things as well but that those only have like two different those only have two distinctions between uh what ending you get oh. whereas you get multiple you get like 40 or so distinctions depending on the fa the family situation fair enough then shepherd i really wish i could remember your example right now Carl and Garrus have achieved B support. Carl's life sucks. <laughs> I remember doing all these lines. Let's see what Carl and Nico's B support is like. Wow, a lot of these supports involve asking questions. Mr. Carl, may I ask more questions? Of course. I could use a break. What do you wish to know? Well... Putting away all the dangerous things didn't work last time. Is there any way to prevent another death, or...? I don't believe we can. I thought as much. Mayu used her hands, and we all kind of need those, so... I guess we can't really do anything about it. Stick to large groups, and you should be safe. Right. You probably should, too. Being alone with all these cameras probably makes you... Um... I know, but I must do this. So, what are you watching anyway? Well... Oh, hey, we can see Sam from here. Which one? Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about Mr. Sam. It would be nice if we consistently referred to them differently instead of going back and forth between the two. Yeah, that needs to be specified pretty often. Yeah. So, you're spying on everyone, right? Were you a secret agent or something? No, I'm a landlord. Where did the cameras come from? They're mine. I had some on me before we got here. Where do you set up cameras for an apartment? The hallways and outside, I'm guessing? Oh, this poor child. The inside of people's rooms. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Not where I come from. <laughs> he looks on his eyes then. Do you remember when I told you my mother grinds hazelnuts into her pancake batter? I think so. That sounds familiar. Wait. Carl, I want your security camera out of my room. Sorry, force of habit. <laughs> Carl and Nico have achieved B support. Carl, stop putting cameras in everyone's rooms <laughs> without their permission. Carl and Gail. I actually think this was a good one. So, funny thing about the support conversation totals, Gail has the lowest amount out of everybody, which I don't think is surprising until you consider the fact that he lasted longer than Papyrus, Mayu, Carl, and Kate. <laughs> Wow, he was just that much of a stuck-up ass. It's worth noting that there's only five Gale supports in total in this mod in general. Yeah. <laughs> he has three total support conversation partners, Carl, Garrus, and Jill, and only five conversations amongst them. Oh, good lord. Gale? Ugh, what? Are you trying to confront a traitor for that escape to freedom? No, and if I was, it sure isn't you. If it was me, you'd be dead right now. I have got to stop confronting people alone. Get yeah, you get shot a lot because of it. Stop doing that, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know of dinosaur extermination? Oddly specific, but you're asking the right person. Why bring this up? It yeah, it's from Dino Crisis. We have to keep in mind. Training grounds. When? Later. The dinosaurs that know karate. That's new. <laughs> I guess I should have expected that to not be so simple. I take it the Enforcer did this to you? Ah, oh, crap. I broke a rule, didn't I? It's only a matter of time until that kicks in. They didn't do this to you? No, Rex did this. <sighs> hmm. I guess the rule didn't state when the punishment would happen. Regardless, how much damage did you do to him? 
Put up a good fight. Haven't had a battle that tough since. Ugh. You're not over the mall by thing, are you? The what? Not the scary. You want context for this? Yes, I would like some context for this. Thank you very much. Okay, so. <laughs> Digimon story Cybersuits and Hacker's Memory. One of the boss fights is the Sistermons. Sistermon Blanc and Sistermon CL or Noir, depending on which region you're in. And they're basically a nun with a trident and a nun with a, a, nun with a pair of dual, dual submachine guns shaped like crosses. And they just, they just attack you. Okay. So, for context, they're trying to, for some reason, start up a gym. And... They ask you to help them get it started. And, and to test things out, they they wind up having a fight between you and one of the other NPCs, and then uh, a fight between them and you and one of the other NPCs, just to see how things go. And it's like, okay, we're getting mauled by nuns now, great. <laughs> All right. I'm guessing it was an exceptionally hard fight. It wasn't, it's just that mauled by nuns sounds hilarious. <laughs> I feel like you'll just reject Fair what enough. I'll say. But cooperating is preferable. I'll see if I can dig up a weakness. I mean, like... Arrangement. I mean, just imagine the sentence, Hey, you remember that time when a TRS got mauled by nuns? It's like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, there are so what? many concepts. There's just so many things you could say with that. That feels like a brand new sentence type thing. Well, you can make a lot of brand new sentences with some of the weird crap that happens in Digimon. Yeah, I can imagine that. Leave it to me. Carl and Gale have achieved C support. Carl and Crash C support. Crash is hard to work with, considering the only way to get him talking with others conveniently is if they understand gibberish or he speaks normally. I finally found an opportunity to talk to you in private. That's a thing. Can you speak normally? Howdy, girl, what a girl, come on, get about it. Let me rephrase this. Please speak in a way I saw you speak on the security cameras several times prior that others understand better. <laughs> <laughs> I love the lack of subtlety behind it. Okay, does everybody know this? I don't think At this point, a lot I'm of people know that Crash can speak normally. So... Yeah, I, it's fun. Holy crap, stop asking. Not Australian. Oh, I thought you were going to ask about the gibberish. You didn't answer it before, you won't answer it now. Where is your Australian accent and terminology? Why are you choosing to focus on that? Because it's weirder than the gibberish is. Given Australians? Yeah, probably is, actually. You really want to hear what that sounds like? Boy, am I on time! <laughs> this is what he sounds like in the PS1 commercials. Funny stuff, Doc, did you see that? Hi, I'm Crash! Crash Bandicoot! The Super Marsupial, the wonder from Down Under! The Rocket with a Pocket! You may remember me from my last adventure where I just, oh, I don't know, saved the world. You're welcome. And now, I have to do it again. Bigger, deeper, even I, wider. It has over 30 I, levels. I'm not even sure if that sounds as strange. This is incredibly awkward. We will never well, speak of this again. Good thing okay. I'm not wearing tight pants, because they would have written Ca sure. <laughs> Carl and Crash have achieved sea support. Cool jet pack and this most excellent jet ski. Can we skip this now? <laughs> <laughs> Carl and Octavian. I, another Octavian is going to only be good. Carl should probably stop confronting crazy people alone and armed. Back home, he'd get shot, but POing Octavian might lead to a worse fate than death. Insanity by Marge jokes. We've only had like one Marge joke so far. Yeah, that's impressive. You've really restrained yourself. <laughs> Octavian? <laughs> what you need? You're a massive control freak. Anything else? You're not bothered by that comment at all? Even though you're following the mastermind's orders? 
now I just have a lot of self-control. People should exercise that part of themselves more often. I mean, I'm not perfect at it, but I haven't punched a door down yet like my brother did. I didn't know you had a brother or he did that. Talking to me for long enough will eventually lead to me venting my family issues. That's pretty hard to keep a lid on since it's a consistency in my life. Hmm. The thing okay, is, is that... I'm going to what? change the subject. I don't think Sorry. I want to hear you rant about your family for several hours. The thing about uh, the situation is, is that once you're used... Once you've had those experiences, you don't forget about them. Yeah, that's and if you fair. And if you don't forget and forgive, then you're just stuck dealing with remembering it over and over again every time that it's around, you know? Yeah. Because it's a self-defense mechanism to prevent it from happening again. That's fair. There are definitely certain memories I know I remember in my past, which I'm just like, just delete this memory, please, Brain. We don't need this memory anymore. You really don't. I was gonna bring up you being a devoted, loving father to Marta and Patrick as a contrasting point, but I'll save that for some other time. Eh. You weren't kidding. You really do have trouble stopping yourself from complaining about them. Yeah, they... Change subject. Right, sorry. Anyways... You brought up my control free tendencies. Yes. First of all, where did that come from? You refuse to say? I just changed the subject from family issues, Carl. Seriously? Well, my family has ungodly high expectations of you for your perfect grades and any failure to for you and yell at. Just tell me why you're putting up with the mastermind. Hearing about bad families will just depress me. That's not really an easy question to answer. You hate Something the else. Mind, yet you follow their orders. Despite this, you still have some level of control over this. You care about everyone, but are more of a stalker than I am, which is saying a lot. <laughs> something I, something I feel like uh, also needs to be said in relation to the last sentence that Octavian just said. Okay, so when people have high expectations of you, that's a pain in the ass to deal with, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. Because mm. when people have low expectations of you, they're less likely to give you crap if you don't do as good as they expect you to. Or because they don't expect you to do as good of a job, it's easier for them to be impressed by what you do. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, high expectations sucks. Yeah, it might but actually on the, be... But on the contrast, low expectations suck as well. Because of the fact they don't expect anything from you, so if you fail, they don't support you or do anything about it. Yeah. So it's but like, you get what I, I do get, get what, what I mean. mean. I'm just saying the opposite is not good either. You really need a midpoint for the expectations. Such as you need a minimum standard, but not push them so hard that the minimum standard is just on a generally too high. I remember... To everyone out there, never pit people under that much pressure. Yeah, trust me, it sucks. Look, the, if you want, put if you put coal under pressure, sure, eventually it'll turn into a diamond. But that only happens after a million years. Otherwise, if you put it under the same amount of pressure as you would nowadays, you'll just crack the coal in half. I'm not known for making things simple. There's something here. I know it. You saw the cork board, right? Yes. How close am I? I don't think I should say. Got feeling, but I think I'm close. I get the feeling he'd have no qualms with me with telling me I'm going the wrong way. Carl and Octavian have achieved B support. I feel I did Carl's lines very awfully in that particular scene. They felt very bad compared to the other ones. I didn't really find any problem, but eh. It's just personal critique, probably. Probably. Garrison and Gale. I, I, hmm? This cannot go well. This cannot go well. Gale? You haven't been a team player. Our situation requires cooperation for us to survive. Okay. Not necessarily. 
You're clearly part of a team. Your bio says you leave behind struggling teammates. If they're reliability, I'm not wasting my time on them. Your team leader must get fed up with you going rogue all of the time. Wow, I feel like a hypocrite just saying it like that. Am I right? No. I thought I was. Proper military training generally drills out the insubordination pretty quick. And there's consequences for going against orders. You're military, huh? I wouldn't get away with going rogue easy. I couldn't go after several really bad criminals because of all the red tape in my way. How have you not gotten discharged yet? Oh, spirits, you're the leader, aren't you? <laughs> so, funny thing, it actually, it, I actually did, mm -hmm. it actually was mentioned in front of Garrus that Gale was the leader. It's just that when I was writing the scene, I forgot about it. I kept this in because Garrus probably forgot about that too. Yeah, especially given his personality. So what if I am? Where do I even start with this? <laughs> what do you know about leading a team? I led a team of 11 other people, and we managed to get a nickname from just how much we were doing to get rid of all the violent, drug-dealing scum. Well, fearless leader, what will your crew do now that you're gone? I thought so. Well, they're all dead. Consider yourself lucky. Your idealism could have gotten you killed. What do you mean? How hard would it be for you to identify a potential sleeper agent in your team? Fine. I can take a hint. Finally. Alright. Let's see if I can figure out the trade before the phase ends. Garrus and Gale have achieved C support, though it feels more like an F support with how badly it went. Yeah, Gale pushed some, accidentally pushed some buttons there, cause yeah. uh Gale does nothing but push buttons, so it's not like that's a surprise. Yeah, but I don't think he knew that Garrus getting betrayed was the entire reason that his loyalty mission happened in Mass Effect 2. Yeah. So the sleeper agent, ironically. Yeah. Garrus and Natsuki su see support. Natsuki and Nanako would likely struggle a bit not to accidentally poison, f accidentally food poison Garrus because of his alien biology. Yeah, Tarians eat different food from humans. Yeah. Hey, I want to make some food for everyone, but you're the weird one because acids or whatever. Urian biochemistry is based on dextro amino acids instead of level amino acids, so we can't. Yeah, whatever. How do I make cupcakes for you specifically? Food poisoning sucks. Uh, I'm not really sure where they get the food, honestly. I'm not sure what rules of the virtual world do and don't affect things like this. Huh. Not the answer I wanted. Okay, time to annoy Octavian for an answer, I guess. <laughs> You're just going to run up to the enemy and yell at them for information. He's surprisingly passive to the point of pushover. I'll be right back. <laughs> Later. Alright, here they are. I take it you got your answer? Yep. It's just not a satisfying one. I still want to hear it. Basically, the Mastermind went out and bought it using credits at the Citadel because they can. Grocery shopping is super boring. Huh. Or a gun, or what the hell? Oh god, I forgot to change that image. Wait, they left to go to the Citadel? Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that. So, we were there was supposed to be an image of the Citadel there, but I must have forgotten to change the background from the nuns thing. So, instead of the Citadel, we wanted with nuns. Whoops. Cue grocery shopping with crazy nuns in the background. That was not supposed to happen. I'm going to fix that later. Oh. Don't get your hopes up. It's probably not going to be anywhere we can get to. If it was, then the Mastermind's an idiot. Pointing it out decreases the odds they make an error like that. You know, that is a pretty valid point. Whoops. You don't sound very concerned. Got it's funny know, how- I don't see most of these weirdos being much of a threat. It's funny how the Mars joke got completely invalidated because of the glitch. Yep. Yep, it did. 
it completely did. What was the Marge joke? Oregano, what the hell? Ooh, they're having a sale on nutmeg. Ugh, shopping is so boring. Not even the Marge jokes can make it tolerable. <laughs> really? Yeah, I hate shopping. You sound overconfident in your ability to fight. You know, I even I have to kind of wonder about the biology about Turian genetics ver Turian food versus human food. Food poisoning. <sighs> yeah, I don't know no, it's how more the, vibe the they give off. You and CEO have rods up your butts, but you're not complete jerkwads. And I don't see the kids being a problem, etc. The only one I feel like will become an issue is Gale. But that's so painfully obvious that everyone can see it. Natsuki is so cynical and blunt about these things. Yeah. Are you saying you saw right through Mayu? If her bio being entirely about Mio wasn't a red flag, her off way of acting was. Also, again, I'm not afraid to talk to Octavian. Get him talking long enough and you can get some answers. That's how I knew why he couldn't stand Mayu and why I knew not to trust her. Hmm. That is dangerous, Natsuki. It really isn't. What Steve <laughs> did to me so far was say, please stop acting like a Karen, it's getting old. What does that even mean? I get unreasonable sometimes. I'm working on it. Either way, I'm not afraid of him. Huh. I know, I know. It looks bad given how everyone feels right now, but if anyone that talks to him one-on-one -on -one looks bad, then he can't talk to anyone at all. Ever. And he's gonna do that. Good point. But still... Garrus and Natsuki have achieved sea support. And we got quite a lot- uh, quite some nice information. Garrus and Nanako, then! Nanako is purity incarnate, but her patience has its has limits. Hello, Mr. Vicarian. Do you have laundry? Not today. Okay. Sorry if I folded your clothes weird last time. I'm not used to them yet. That's fair, given his exoskeleton and weird physiology physiolo physiological stru structure. Nanako, are you doing all of the chores? Well, I want to help around here, but you don't want me investigating. Nanako, please understand, we just don't want you at risk. But everyone's sad all of the time, and it makes me sad too. Oh. Nanako, I know you want to make everything better, but this isn't a simple situation. Well, it'd be a lot simpler if you five weren't arguing so much. That's, uh... And you heard us argue, didn't you? How is being mean to Mr. Sam supposed to make things better? You weren't making sense. Aww. Because he's volatile and could easily be the traitor. But Crash is around him all of the time. And he can't speak normally. So how are we supposed to know when Sam does something... Oh wait, he writes just fine. What kind of team leaders don't trust their team? You and CEO are jerks. Monaco, don't run off on your own. Garrus and Nonako have achieved sea support, apparently. Yeah, that wasn't exactly... <laughs> that felt more like an F support. Miko and Natsuki. Ooh. Miko and Natsuki commit cake. I really hope that it, that's not an inappropriate use, euphemism like sandwiches are. Also, don't ruin Jill's sandwich like that. What's the euphemism for sandwich? Uh, you haven't heard that before? No, but ironically, I know that cake is. <laughs> also, what's with this music? Because this is a comical support where you, about cooking and stuff. We're using the pizza theme from Spider-Man. Fair enough, okay, then. now we can add the icing. It'll look so good, we won't want to eat it. But we're gonna. Trust me, these cakes are the best. If it'll be anything like your cupcakes, I can believe it. How'd you learn this stuff so well? 
Well, it was this or go hungry for the day. Go hungry? My dad wasn't great at keeping track of what food we had in the house. But enough about that. It's not an issue anymore. Let's bake some cake! This was not meant to get depressing. Later! Oh my gosh, it looks so yummy! Editor's note. It's not the same as when I coated a village in Minecraft with cakes, but it looks nice and results in more yumminess and less villagers getting stuck outside their houses because there's so much damn cake in the way. I feel like that needs a little concept, Mr. Editor. <laughs> Mr. Editor? Mr. Editor is refusing to give us any context in this situation involving Minecraft and cake, so we are now going to be moving on. Why the heck? Why in the heck would you do that? Precisely what I want to know, Natsuki! But Mr. Editor here won't tell us! Editor's note, I felt like it. Fair enough! Maybe we should enjoy the cake we have so we don't go overboard. What else should we bake while we're in the mood? Can you teach me how to make pancakes? We've certainly got a sweet tooth, don't we? Alright, new recipe time! So Mr. Editor is back, and now can he give us context about that cake Minecraft scenario? I did it because I was bored and I had nothing else to do, because once you beat the Ender Dragon in Minecraft, there's not really a whole lot to do. Unless you mod it to all hell and back, like I do. Yeah, and I wasn't using mods, so, eh. I can't play Minecraft without mods anymore. Yay! Nico and Natsuki have achieved sea support. Now we get Jill and Gale in their B support. Wow. Now for a normal conversation, apparently. Relatively speaking, anyway. Gale? Jill. Okay. Have you found out anything so about I guess the game? Our first... I mean, surely you can bring that up. It's not like it'll put you at some disadvantage. Sorry, you were saying. I think this is our first Jill conversation, so now we're finally seeing Lunar as Jill uh, since uh, Charlie left the project. Yep, or this is our first one with Jill, Jill, with the new voice. You were saying about Jill. So, when I um, when I was asking Lunar to do other female character voices, and eventually when we had that, you remember when I had meetings with everyone to touch base on the project yep. a while back. So when when we got to Lunar's uh, one, I don't remember how the conversation got to the point, but I remember saying to her that she's really good at doing the sexy lady voice. <laughs> okay. She, like, Lunar ha has, I think, the deepest, most suave voice so far of the voice cast, so she's able to pull off characters like Ulala from Space Channel 5 and Nikki from Pandemonium. And I think she's also a good fit for Jill. And then you've got me doing Garrus, and I cut on not doing CEO, and how, I, how is my voice not any deeper? I was thinking I'll she just... was doing a very good Jill then. Yeah. Point acknowledged. Going through the books in the libraries here and in the lodge was tedious, but it has a, quite a bit of information on incidents relevant to what we've all been through. The question is, where is this coming from? I noticed that too. One of the associates must be an information specialist of some kind. Must be. There's a lot of unnecessary details in them. Never be at the exposition fairies here to tell you all the very bobby bull going down. Fucking Christ. It's not over yet. Oh, oh dear God, why? Yeah, that's precisely the correct reaction. <laughs> Denzel Crocker noises. Please. 
Something particularly helpful, though. But maybe we can think of something here that can point us in the right direction. I've been waiting so yeah, long no for you to see that. Works, so yeah, I can imagine. Clues that make it clear or show. Because I know I told you about the, the exposition fairy joke at one point. Information is really frustrating. Yeah, you did. But I didn't tell you that Crocker was going to show up. No, I don't think you did. <laughs> Denzel Crocker noises and Crocker just balls the giant fairy thing. Yeah, I'm else? doing. I'm actually fun. Yay. Anyways. Oh, good God. I guess that was it. Good. Jill and Gale have achieved B support. And that was surprisingly the most support that Gale could possibly offer, given everything else he's been a part of. Yeah. Actually, no, he did quite well with Carl. Alright, Jill and Sam, let's see how this goes. Jill and Sam, C support. Jill is the closest we have to someone stable. Sam is the most unstable. Hey, Sam? Jill, is this about your piano skill during that musical performance we were a part of? No, it's about our team being divided. Shame. I found it impressive. Thanks, but we have a group conflict to discuss. CEO and Garrus really don't like you or Crash. Okay, me, I get. Crash? He's just as uptight as the rest of you are. Uptight is... Okay, honestly, fair, especially with Garrus and CEO, but Crash, of all people, being uptight? Yeah, this needs a little explanation. Okay, to be fair, you and him aren't that bad, but you still get in my way a lot. Crash is in your way? How? The same way you are, his morality. He called me out last trial, if you recall. Yeah, it's hard defending you there. You did lie in court. Yes, but we had to waste time proving neither of us did it, so if he went along with it, there wouldn't have been an issue. Yeah, so in the Chapter 1 trial, Sam tried lying that him and Crash were both with each other and could vouch for each other. Crash ruined it. Huh. It made the trial last longer, trying to prove that they didn't do anything. Fair enough. Unfortunately, he ratted you out, and you look very shady and unethical now. Well, he is! That's, there's nothing about looking like him. He is very unethical. Shady, maybe. Unethical, definitely. Again, why do those two hate Crash under these circumstances? They can't understand him. Exactly. That's like hating someone for speaking a different language than you. It's not their fault. Well, I'm hoping I can trust you later down the road. You can't, can you? The deck is definitely stacked against you right now. Clearly. Jill, if I may say this, those two are not, and never will, lead me. I know their methods, and they won't fly with me. Which is ironic, because you're both basically like vigilantes, which would get along quite well with the other two. Okay. The reason that they don't get along is because of... If you could try searching for anything weird, like a way to the floors on the elevator we can't access. The reason that they don't get along is because Garrus has... What's the word I'm looking for? Garrus is a lot more judgmental than Sam is. Yeah, okay. Plus he's military. Yeah. Uh, Alright, you keep going. I need to use the restroom. When you have time. That is much better. I'll take a look at the elevator again later. Later. Miss Valentine. Sam, Crash, what do you need? I think we can get the elevator working, but we'd need your lockpicking expertise. Hmm. What? There's a lock in the elevator preventing us from accessing the other floors. <laughs> I'm willing to risk it, but I need your lockpick skills to do this. Alright, this'll be risky, but let's try it. Jill and Sam have achieved sea support. I wonder how many of these support conversations we can get through without, without Mr. Octavian Editor here in the background. So let's see if we can get crash through them. So now we have Jill and Nanako. Jill is once again struck being, stuck being the group mediator. Oh. I had a feeling you were here. I'm not apologizing to him. He's mean. Garrus and CEO are definitely not making things easy right now, that's for sure. But Crash and Sam aren't either. 
I'm gonna guess this happened immediately after the conversation with Garrus and Nanaka. Why can't we all get along? It would be nice if we could, but some people just don't mix well with each other. Sam right and Flash are laid back, Garrus and CEO are very serious, and they don't agree. Oh. But they don't have to agree. They can get along even if they don't agree if they try. So they're not trying. I mean, Natsuki says about everything being bad a lot, but I don't agree, but we're still friends. Mm -hmm. I wish we all felt that way, Nanako. Nanako. That's an interesting way of saying it. What do I do, Miss Valentine? This is a problem between them that they're gonna have to sort out. I'll try defusing it, but it's mostly up to them. Please make them stop fighting. I don't want anyone getting hurt. Jill and Nonako have achieved sea support. Oh. Yay. That one can only have taken place after the Garrus Nanako sea support. Yeah, that's why I said that. I thought so. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. CEO and Sam. This could only be chaos. Money makes the world go round, which is probably why I feel like vomiting all the time. Oh, I think I remember this one. Sam. Oh, great. What is it now? How much would you need to be paid to take this seriously? More than you can afford. Name your price. Well, we have a hundred million dollars in the national budget left over from- A hundred million dollars? What, do you crap money? Money is not a very great bribe to us. If spending trillions of dollars for an earthquake remote satellite thing to get through a case isn't a good indication of that, I don't know what is. Where in the did you get that much money? The Queen of Canada. What's Canada? How do you not know what Canada is? I'm friggin' confused right now! Canadians are weird! Are you less confused now? <laughs> no! <laughs> Just the random immediate Ed appearance. You know what's funny? The reason that they made the joke about Canadians are weird, the animation studio that made Ed and Eddie last I checked, it was Canadian. Oh, that explains so much. I think that's also why the cankers in the hall in the vacation episode said, We're on holiday! Because holiday is not what Americans say a holiday is. We use the word vacation for that. Well, yeah, we use holiday here in England, so good on you, Canada, for using the correct terminology. I think my anyway. brain is melting from how illogical this feels. You wouldn't like adventuring with me, then. That can get very weird very fast. What would be a good bribe, then? You got fudge sickles? That's... it? What's the issue? You... you can just buy all the fudge sickles in the world with that kind of money. Why would you need... Hey, I gave you an option. Take it or leave it. I need to lay the down. CEO has achieved aneurysm and C support with Sam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CEO and Octavian. CEO did not get many support conversations in chapter two. Let's see, how many did he get in chapter two? Two. CEO's line to yeah, he only had two. Yep, two. CEO attempts to confirm his theories. You there, Octavian. Oh, uh, hi. You need something? Your... everything confounds me. I get some more comments a lot because I'm a weirdo. Personally, your body type is non-indicative of anything your profile mentions. Is my theory that it's a virtual world model true? Oh, absolutely. I actually don't like working out or exercise at all. <laughs> I love how you don't even hide it. Oh, absolutely. Not even subtle, no, nah, no, nah, it's just like, not even, not even trying to hide it. I knew you were compensating for something. CEO, nobody would take me seriously at all with my normal body type or voice. Yeah, it's they really would not. Voice, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Like, do you think anyone would be able to take this voice seriously? And you see what my icon looks like, do you think anyone would be afraid of that? Uh, no. Yeah, not really. 
Now I can't even try and sugarcoat that. No, you are not. You are not intimidating. I could try to be intimidating, but it would definitely not come out the way that I intend for it to come out. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait until chapter LH is out because I do attempt to uh, have one of the characters I voice to be the intimidating, scary villain. Again, not the Cthulhu type villain, but the mastermind type villain. Oh, good. This we'll, ought to be fun. We'll see how it goes when Chapter LH comes out. So you're just a tech geek that made the model and edited your voice. How'd you get wrapped up in all of this? I really didn't want to. I take it just asking you to get us out won't work. Sorry, but no. You hate the mastermind, yet you're doing their dirty work. Why? The answer is... complicated to some, simple to others. You'll find out eventually, I'm sure. Something else. Why did they set up a somewhat complex death game in the first place? If the intent was to make us suffer, why not pit us against each other in a death battle? Against each other endlessly with that simulation thing you mentioned before? I swear that was there was a pause there. I. I think there was, and I didn't edit it out. We have to keep in mind, you get your lines in last, and I am so damn tired by the time you get them in. Fair enough. I just want them. I just want a chapter milestone done by that point. Well, there's a little, there's a little note to tick for you to, like, have a small edit at, then. <laughs> It'll be a pain in the ass, but all right, I guess. Yes, yeah, something like that. Well, there is a reason for it, so... Oh, we have an audience! That's why we have rules, and why we're not just slaughtering each other like savages. All of this is set up to be entertainment. Dang, you're smarter than those DR kids by a long shot. They're idiots. Or, yeah, they are. <laughs> so, what do you do with that information? Uh, nothing. What the hell am I supposed to do with it? Knowing we're being watched doesn't get us out of here faster. If anything, the pro audience is probably horrified whenever someone goes to the bathroom. Nobody wants to see that. CEO and Octavian have achieved C support. And CEO's voice actor has realized he might need to keep better close to his close eye on his ear on his art on his lines to make sure those small little pauses don't actually happen. Sound crash B support while CEO's voice actor avo avoids responsibility. The adventure continues. Okay, so you remember the Sam and Jill support conversation? Yes, yes, I do. This is this is the continuation of that. Well, I'll admit I'm having way more fun now than I was since we got here. You gotta go to Hodorito. It is a sewer level, but it's an adventure nonetheless. I wasn't expecting this to be under the school. Huh. Oh, why'd you get hard to get it out here? Kind of better? Mind a mojo? Akumaka? I hope it's the supercar. I'm Insert yes not noises sure here. What I'm looking at. Insert what? Insert yes noises here. <laughs> Nah, I was thinking more insert Marge noises here. I was thinking more Coco goes crazy every time a demolition derby happens. Uh, so uh, this So this is supposed to be a reference to something that happens in Final Fantasy VIII, and yeah. this is also supposed to show what the end of phase simulation for uh, Chapter 2 would have been had it happened. Huh, okay. You'll well. We there's an editor's note that'll happen soon. Hopefully, it'll go over everything. Sure. Maybe it needs to boot up. Does this thing have an instruction manual? Well, that sounds like something. But I get do. Hold on to something. I love Back how the two, those two are. Left, don't we? Oh, Not good at animating. Happening, period. Yeah, we didn't predict this. <laughs> what in the world? Is the school flying right now? Why in the world is this a function for this building? 
I'm so lost right now. I call first shot at driving the school. <laughs> huh. Adding crashed school into sky to the list of weird things I did. <laughs> Okay, now that the school has stopped moving, we should... What in the h are you doing? I'm not fixing the whole freaking school if you break it. Ooh, then it's had a puddle too. Okay, I guess that adds up. I mean, they didn't go into any restricted areas. These were meant for access in case a simulation occurred. But we did it prematurely. Yeah, you did. You didn't break any rules, fortunately, but I request that you please don't do that again. Let's just all pretend this didn't happen and wasn't worth mentioning, okay? Why was this a solution to the simulation? The school will get blown up by missiles if a simulation happened this phase. These simulations sound fun. Can we do them more often? <laughs> Dragon I2, let's go! Except that. That was boring the first time. Uh -huh. This was a very weird support conversation, but it's technically Sam and Crash reaching B support. Editor's note, a sequence like this was originally meant to happen, alongside a Final Fantasy style battle against Rex, but it was dropped because Nanako had to act very out of character in order for it to work, while she retained her main character status for the kid chapter, which would be a problem. The intentions were to, one, add a new minigame to spice stuff up, and two, introduce Rex seriously as a threat instead of the goofball he actually is. Nanako being the main character ruined it because I didn't want to... I didn't want the entire character focus on the investigation team. By splitting it up between them and the group friend group on a chapterly basis, that was meant... To, that was... And that, and that meant to make this work, A, the investigation team steals the spotlight, or B, Nanako beats the <clears throat> out of a T-Rex. The second option is hilarious, but not as serious context as it was meant to be. Ah. Uh, very fair then. I mean, can you imagine Nanako just slapping a T-Rex? No, what I imagine is Nanako going boop on the nose and going, No! Bad! Stop it! Bad! Bad! Nanako's not that innocent. <laughs> Nanako's innocent and sweet to the heart of the point of diabetes, but she is not that innocent. <laughs> Natsuki and Crash. Yay for subtitles! Okay, so we mentioned before in Chapter 3 that Natsuki can read subtitles. Here we go. You need something? Yeah, I get that a lot. You have no idea how annoying it is being labeled a sundere. Oh, right. That's weird, isn't it? Well, too late now. How about we chill at the outdoor balcony? You know about Abby Sabin? Why speak if you expect not to be understood? You know what? That's I love how she's just <laughs> proving against Crash's logic. Yep, huh? Good counter. <laughs> hey, you wanted to hang out, right? As long as it doesn't involve explosive violence, I'm probably okay with it. Eating contest? I mean... Sure? It's not like I'll get fat, so... I guess there's no problem with that. Three, two, one! <laughs> okay, I think I'm done now. Ooh. IRL, that probably would have killed me. If not from overeating, then probably the sugar overdose would have done it. I guess there's a few advantages here. I like how I just shoved her- I just- I like how I just made her shove her face into the cake and just vibrate violently as if she's- going crazy with eating. No, my favorite part then was the way Crash just slowly turned to look at her and it was just like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Anyways. Well, I ate more cake than would ever be necessary and gave Octavian a lot to clean up. So, yeah, probably not. 
I just don't baby don't be the cat. I don't. Growing up, I was lucky if Dad left anything in the fridge. Here, though, I can eat more healthy amounts. Or go overboard like I just did. Your father was starving you? <laughs> he doesn't even try the gibberish. I'm afraid so. Wait. Wait, what the heck is that voice? That voice was hot. What the fudge? <laughs> that voice was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, Crash's voice does sound kind of hot. It's weird. <laughs> it makes me a little uncomfortable how hot it sounds. <laughs> oh, good god. And if you thought I'm Crash normal. sounding normal, <laughs> if you thought Crash sounding normal sounded weirdly hot, you haven't seen the newest version of DuckTales when Donald Duck winds up having his voice sound hot. No, Did you see that? No, I have seen that. I have seen that. That was fun. That was funny. <laughs> I am the storm. Have you been saying things like that this whole time, Donald? <laughs> okay, I'll just have that on the back burner for now. Um, wow. <sighs> Calm. Okay. Yes, my dad was basically starving me. Don't worry, I'm past it now. It's easy to get past it when it's not an issue anymore. I haven't seen my dad in forever. I can't even imagine something like that. What's it like being adopted by a floating witch doctor mask anyway? We... Wait, why do we even want to know this? Crash, it's surprising if people haven't at least heard of you, all things considered. Hmm... Natsuki and Crash have achieved sea support. It's weird if people in my world have not heard of Crash, at least, because he is the most renowned character here. The only thing, the only one that I think might trump Crash at this point would maybe be Undertale, because it's really highly re relevant lately. But that's pretty much the only one I see uh, being the one that could trump Crash in terms of popularity. I and was, relevancy. I was thinking Jill and, uh, what call it, Resident Evil. I guess there is a new Resident Evil movie coming out soon. And how many different games? You know, something I didn't realize was that Jill deals with zombies that are actually bioweapons all the time, aka mutant things. I don't have a single Jill support with Crash. That is awkward. <laughs> I, probably, I probably should have them have a support conversation. <laughs> That'll be, that'll be a fun one. By the yeah. way, I know it's chapter four, but I feel I have to address that you're a mutant. Things a bioweapon. I kill those on a daily basis. Maybe she doesn't know that until then because she doesn't. She knows that Sam is a talking animal. And let's be honest, Jill Valentine being in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom has made her deal with Rocket Raccoon before, so she's probably not that faced. You know what, that's fair, and he is just a marsupial. Also, there's the time she got mauled by lawyers, let's... <laughs> that'll be interesting. <laughs> Moving on. Natsuki and Octavian, see support. There was a fourth wall? No, there wasn't with these two characters. Oh. Hey, Octavian. Oh, Lord, what went wrong now? Nothing. Sheesh, that was a rude response. So was complaining about everything. Touché. Anyways, I want to know more about you. Uh, why? Oh, wait, that's why. Um, I'm kind of exactly what you think I am. Come on, you gotta be more than a nerdy pushover that plays games all the time. He really doesn't. No, that's basically it. Seriously? Don't you have friends or other hobbies or a job? Yes, but I suck at maintaining them. Kinda, of, but art, music, writing, and 3D modeling all relate to gaming in some way. And yes, but janitor isn't a very exciting job, but it is pretty stable and consistent. Hey, we're still getting somewhere. You're a janitor? You think a four-year degree in technology sciences would get your foot in the door for a tech job, but no. uh... Yeah, no. They want you to already have been in the industry for years in order to have an entry-level job. Let that sink in. Entry-level jobs require already being in an entry-level job for several years. America! 
I could not get anything with my degree for a reason. America! Well, that's stupid. How am I gonna get new employees when all the people that fit that criteria eventually all die off? Just a requirements thing needs a rework. Yep. America, full stop, needs a rework. Does stuff like this happen in Britain? It sounds like it doesn't from what you're saying. Here's, it the sounds fun, like every... here's the fun comparison between Britain and America. There, on a, in America, there is like a page per year on Wikipedia of the amount of policemen that have died in, in the year. And, it, and it's about like 50 or something right now for like 2023. I don't know the exact number. For Britain, the number is 20 and the list is from now, is now till uh, 1920 something? Where policemen Something. have been killed on the job? Sounds like that there's a lot less crap happening over there by comparison to here. Yes! <laughs> Octavia's supports generally lead to very interesting discussions, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it seems to, doesn't it? Well, yeah. how about TV? Your excessive amount of Marge makes it pretty clear you like The Simpsons. I used to be a bigger fan than I am now. In fact, my first big post-war project was Simpsons themed. It's not saved anywhere, so I can't show it. It's not in a cluster anywhere. Did you, you remember that giant that poster I showed you before? Yep. So my very first of those projects was actually Simpsons themed. And yep. I learned to dumb down how many characters I'm putting in there because oh my god, it was a cluster. <laughs> there were too many people. <laughs> very fair. There are a lot of distinct characters in The Simpsons, so. There were like 70 characters on it, two poster board things. There were way too many people on that thing. Yeah, that's fair. Only for school projects. Recreating the Mona Lisa with markers isn't quite as appealing as drawing the Simpsons couch gag based off of... Um... Okay, uh, ask you a question. What the heck is this couch gag a reference to? I feel like it's a famous painting, but... It is. I can't tell you the name of the painting, but it is a famous painting. You didn't know that? I knew it was a famous painting, but I don't know the name of it. How the heck should I know? I'm not Google. Okay, this is gonna annoy me until I get the answer. One sec. Relativity by M.C. Escher. Huh, that's interesting. Congratulations, you now know more completely useless things. Ta-da! I feel like I wish I had like one of those confetti, one of the confetti things right now. Eh. The party poppers. Yeah. Kind of sucky though, you know. Wait, the painting? It's not that bad. No, I meant the fact that the work of creators will eventually be lost to time or their intrigue and influence. Yeah. I don't follow. You now know more completely useless things because I now know who made the art. Washington, Franklin, Roosevelt, Edison, Einstein, etc. All famous historical figures that nobody actually gives a crap about anymore, anyway. If you think on so much, you'll start thinking the obvious. Yeah, life will move on with or without you. Any big accomplishment you made doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. So once you die, everyone will warn you for a day or two, then life goes on. It's kind of pressing, honestly. Thank you, Octavian. We really needed that. Yeah, a nihilism. Also, I know fuck all about Washington, Franklin. Franklin wrote all Roosevelt. But you get the point. They're all famous historical figures that have made your influence, but no one cares about them anymore. Well, Edison created created electricity. Well, no. It was either Edison or Franklin or one of them, but I definitely know that they were inventors. I was going to say no, because Edison versus Tesla. Tesla. Nikola Tesla. And there's a lot of evidence nowadays showing that a lot Einstein stole a lot of stuff from Nikola Tesla. Mm. But Einstein, but the, Einstein, no one can doubt. But although, you get the point. Although, then again, Einstein would be would have done nothing without his wife, because Einstein was entirely a theoretical physicist, where his wife was the practical physicist who actually experimented and did all the tests to prove Einstein's theories. But you get my point, right? <laughs> yeah, I get your point. 
But it, it, if anything, what I was saying just kind of proves the point further because if some of the most important people attached to these important figures just nobody knows anywhere near as much. Yeah. That was probably the most depressing thing I've ever heard. I mean, you're not wrong, but still. Still, even if life in the grand scheme of things for the individuals are meaningless as history has forgotten and repeats itself, wars break out, all that stupid garbage, that doesn't mean we can't enjoy it in our smaller scale of interpersonal connections and stuff. You flip-flop between those extremes fast. Yeah, I'm weird like that. Just because I view the world in such a negative light, because everything sucks, doesn't mean I'll ignore the few things that don't. Not that most people notice, considering I rant a lot. In the less extreme example, just because Garrus is super loyal, relatable, and snarky, doesn't mean I'm gonna ignore the right them. You gotta look at the good and the bad to appreciate the full picture. God, why do you have to be worse with that than Ashley? Garrus actually is worse with racism than Ashley. Ashley's is actually a nuanced case, it's just no one notices. Fair. Okay, this is getting a little deeper than I expected. I was expecting a normal conversation about your hobbies and your past, and maybe some opinions on things, not a freaking existential crisis about the nature of crushing reality. No, no, no. If Ruki's, if Ruki's good for anything, it's existential crises. Yeah. Talk about video games, I've got a lot of opinions to get out that nobody wants to hear. Pass. Or, yeah, I do. Or we could talk about that time Marge on the one Marge did what? When the heck did that happen? November 2009, I think. Not something I want in my search history, that's for sure. How many people <laughs> do you have to work with here? Too. Too. Too much. Honestly, I don't think there's enough room for all of my Marge jokes. <laughs> I heard the laugh then! I heard you laugh when you said that line! You... Can you believe that this actually happened? Yes, I can I believe can't... it. Not just, not only did it happen, it happened twice. Good it God. happened twice. I think the first time was a Max in the magazine, the other was Playboy. Good God. Natsuki and Octavian have achieved sea support. And like that, we have finished all of the chapter two cha support conversations. Hip hip hoorah! Yay, before we move on, do you want to see the trailer before we forget about it? I was gonna say. You were thinking that too? Yeah. Well, had that be the intermission then. Yay! This computer leads to the supports for Chapter 6 and are meant to be seen after completing Chapter 6. There's also other stuff here. Miscellaneous. We've got a VA recruitment. No, let's have the release trailer. Release trailer. Go! Danganronpa cutting the branches. See how it goes. Why is this game about murder mystery so low pressure from the enemy side? We're causing more stress and damage freaking out over all of this. Well, if we're the ones messing everything up for ourselves, then I guess the bad guys didn't have to put in much effort anyway, huh? Can you give us some more details to understand this better? I have to look into it further. Didn't he seem off when we got here? No, man. Not good at me. I guess you back it up. At least we're smart enough to come armed, but not smart enough to figure out that I didn't kill him. I think a gunshot would be heard all over the mountain or cause an avalanche or a cave-in. There are other methods you could have used. I want to do more than just stand around and do nothing, but nobody wants me to help. Nanako, I know you want to help, and just knowing you care so much is already a big help. I will when I'm dead. I think you have a problem. <laughs> hey, I'm worried about Papyrus. I am too. He was always so sweet, even though he came on a bit strong. You're not actually angry with him, are you? You're worried about him. What makes you think I, the great Papyrus, am worried? Call it fatherly instinct.
A little Fair static, enough. but how was it? Not too bad. I like. I, I feel like maybe it, you could have shown, like, some of the areas a little better, but I suppose there isn't much beyond this basically being a visual novel. Maybe, yeah. maybe some of the trials, but I suppose that would be a bit too spoiler-ish. Yeah, I decided to mostly use conversations from uh, the support conversations and some from the main plot. Yeah. But I tried to make sure that it didn't come across too spoilery. Maybe a little spoilery just to get people interested, but not too spoilery. Like, what does Sam mean when he says that someone was a bit off once they got there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you gotta make people interested enough to want to watch, but you can't reveal everything. I'm just trying to think. It was like, you had the very creepy atmosphere to start off with, and then you just ended with Marge jokes. That's why I made it in the middle and not right at the very end. <laughs> because I definitely would have ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, it looks like... That's the end of the episode because we're all out of time for today. But do not worry, for the com the support conversations of Chapter Three are already done and dusted. So tune in for those next time. But I'm afraid that until that next time, it's time for me to bid the all farewell, good day, and finally, good night.